welcome to Pink Bike Racing. Uh, my main role is as team manager. Skate a scary first World Cup track walk. She said to me, oh, we don't really get jumps my way. Oh, by the way, the course you've got to ride, say 40 or 50 foot gaps in. This is like the highest level. Let me get all the squeaks out of it. Um, where do we even start? <laughs> Let's start from the beginning. The point of the Pink Bike Race Team is to give these riders an opportunity that they otherwise wouldn't have gotten. If they had went with another team, chances are they wouldn't have gotten any money and they would have gotten, in comparison, very little exposure. So this is their chance to show the world what they're capable of and then that will hopefully lead on to them signing for another team after this is done because this is a finite project. This is a launching platform for them to make use of if they can handle the pressure and rise to the occasion. In Lourdes a lot went wrong for Ben, basically. Logistically, just how things went, it was a complete <laughs> sh show. You know, we, we all had bikes, we got to the race, everyone was there on time, we rode, and it was sick. But it was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be, and uh, I was pretty stressed. Is that always like this, Ben? Like what? I don't know. Just really efficient, jolly atmosphere. I'm s sorry, I can't hear you. Do I go all caps? Yeah, urgent, all caps. That feels quite aggressive but I didn't foresee how much was involved to run a team well, to run it like efficiently. And I think that like my main issue is that I, in the past I've just done everything. I just tried to organize everything and do it all myself. And you get to a point that you just run out of capacity. I felt very everywhere. My brain was just like bouncing from job to job. And I was just not, not completing jobs and not finishing things and like dropping balls. My name's Peter uh, and I'm a bike mechanic. I guess I've been kind of on and off helping people out, doing bits of mechanicing for, you'd say probably like oh nine, something like that. It's probably the fact that he's done this so many years himself. And then, you know, just thinking that you'd, you'd built, you'd put a team together and it kind of work the same. I think was the shock of the century for him when he realised like how much his actions affect everyone around him and like the weight of everything he does. I think yeah that's been a bit of an eye opener for him that one. Just what every team starts out like a dream, realising that that dream's not going to come true overnight and then hard work starts. It's pretty much how it is. Long Legs McScotland calling to home base. We are at the top, at the top gondola station. Can you hear me over? So how is Catherine as a manager then? He's all right. Yes. That's Does the job. all right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> In the period between Lourdes and Fort William, there was definitely a line drawn. And now it's like, right, okay, we know, we know better now. Let's go into Fort William with a fresh mental attitude and see if we can make this work. Like you guys get like four hours of practice. Uh, a practice in the top 60 get five hours and if you're in a practice and not top 60 you get three hours. My name is Bernica and I'm the team manager, owner and rider for Pivot Factory Racing. Catherine might be a bit nice, <laughs> a bit nice and goofy I think sometimes you don't need to boss people around but if they're messing up or this or that you're like guys that's how it is we need to sort that out can we get that done? Yeah I think Ben will work it out he'll figure it out he'll delegate a bit more and sometimes people aren't going to be happy with you I think as soon as you learn, they're going to have good days and bad days, and they're not always going to like you. They're going to talk some shit probably about you, which is natural. You're going to annoy them, they're going to annoy you. But as long as everyone's 
fine and open that you're not always going to like each other, you'll be fine with that. Oh, I think it's going to be a long season for Ben. <laughs> there's a, there's so many things behind the scenes that we're trying to do to make sure that, um, again, you're setting your athletes up for success. And we have a lot of resources. We have a lot of staff. So for him to be trying to do this on his own or with a little bit of support, it's it's a lot of work. And he's probably feeling that right now, you know. First day of practice. Um, I'm supposed to go up in 10 minutes. Quick. 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 So right now, Ben is getting prepared to do his GoPro course preview. This is the first part of his coverage for the weekend. So you've got the GoPro course preview and then we're preparing a script for him later that he's going to read from the teleprompter for the first video that's going up on YouTube. So a lot of stuff for him to do. I'm not gonna lie, what he's doing is the hardest thing I've ever seen anyone do at a World Cup. Like having three full-time jobs on the same day. I wouldn't wish that on people I don't like. <laughs> yeah, he's taking it on voluntarily like it's fun. It's crazy. Looking good, right, I think we're on. Well everybody, it's Ben Castro with Tebow Lally from Pink Bike Racing. Yeah, I think so, you're running, looking good. Oh, a nice gap to start the morning. And these top turns have all been relayed. Oh. Oh. Unbelievable. I think that must be the slowest anyone has ever done that drop. Yeah. Oh, so good. That's uh, first practice run here in Fort Rally. Fans are already out. It's only Friday. bring clothes to present in. Faster. That working for you? Yeah. After three years, we are back in Fort William after the longest break from this classic venue since it first featured in the 2000s. When you kind of start a new job, usually you've like worked your, set, your, worked your way up through like a company up to a certain point, like once you begin managing people and you kind of know the structure and how it works and how all the roles are filled and what you're supposed to do and you've probably been trained in it. And I feel like I sort of jumped into a high level position with absolutely no experience and no idea of what you're supposed to do to kind of manage a team. I've kind of had to go to school and figure out exactly how to manage. And I am by no means anywhere close to actually figuring it all out, but just uh, scheduling every day and what each person is doing every day and how they're getting to each place and when and who's going with them and who's going in what vehicle has made things a lot better. Go get it. Come on. I have pants there. Yeah. Actually, I might not, so. Fine. Oh. It's on the list. Is it? Yeah. Look at it. Started off fun loving Cathro, and now, now it's boss Cathro. I don't like telling people what to do, but I've discovered you have to. <laughs> ben! So, uh, it's a practice and qualifying day. Uh, we get an hour and a half kind of do practice runs. My goal is to get two. But we're just here filming the Into the Tape video for Pink Bike. Right man, tell me about this section. <laughs> that used to be quite tricky, but the boys have actually picked out the section to do. And they're, they're filming it and yeah, they've dialed it. So I've literally just ridden down, got here. What's happening? This bit, all right, that's a line, that's a line. That's also a line. Which is quickest? Right, see you later. I'm gonna do another run. Then quick. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to Fort William a lot, but in terms of racing World Cups, yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> Last time I raced was 2015. So seven years is the gap between race runs at Fort William. And uh, yeah, I was pretty keen to get to race again. Like, I guess it's what's his expectations for a race weekend. Is he trying to be a guy that's qualifying? 
Yeah. Then maybe. But is he going to get into the top 20? No. Turning up to these World Cups, like, what's he got to gain really? Like, he's already respected. He already is very established as knowing what he's talking about. So if he comes to World Cup and doesn't qualify all year, he's going to look like a pillar, <laughs> you know? And he's risking a huge amount. So I think um, fair play to him for backing himself and just doing it for the enjoyment and doing it to just to go racing. So I kind of paced things, I thought, really nicely to just be like nice and consistent. Like my top splits were pretty average, but I saved enough that I was able to ride the bottom sections clean and uh, got the motorway. Oh, got the motorway perfect. Why, why do you have to go qualify when we clearly need you to be up to 1 a.m. with us? The media team, we've kind of naturally collected a bunch of people who are all <laughs> pretty daft. In, in Maribor though, for the sound. There's Gareth, he, go, he does the big gap. And John Gareth. Scoopy doopy. Wow. One hit, and, here's the and here's the comparison. Jesus, there they go. I used to watch the Catherine videos and I was like, oh, they're great. Didn't think I'd have to do them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, it's, you have to have fun with it. And I think the charm of a lot of our videos is that you can tell that we are having a good time, even though it is like pretty full on and stressful. Suddenly it's like, oh Jesus, it's midnight. Right, is Castro still up? He is, right, get him. <laughs> we need to do this voiceover. His edits are not gonna make themselves. feeling within the mountain bike community that Ben never really had his chance. And that's for a couple of reasons. I think that bike geometry has changed drastically over the last 10 years. And Ben is a big guy. We still make his V10 as big as we can make it, you know, um, because he's an outlier in terms of size. And I think there's a lot of people thinking, but what if? Because he clearly knows his stuff. He's clearly an excellent rider. If he'd been a 20 year old now with bikes the way they are now, I wonder what could have happened. And I think people have kind of desperate for him to get his shot and his chance at the big time and I think when you come to Fort William and everyone knows that he lives locally and people think like maybe maybe he could do something cool just having the guys up there it was just like it was like clockwork I didn't have to worry or think about things it was just do your warm-up here's your bike here's your goggles I've never had that before never had that and it made the racing easier, for sure. I was ready for my race run.
So a top 30 finish is a huge achievement. It is absolutely huge. It was a little, I couldn't honestly believe it really. Like when he came down into the hot seat, I was like, what? Like, <laughs> so he's like sitting on the hot seat at a World Cup and I was like, I was a bit sort of, yeah, like can't really fathom it really. That's way beyond any, any of our expectations, way beyond. So for him to have smashed it that much on a home, in the home venue, it's just so, so incredible. Yeah, kind of didn't know if I'd ever do a World Cup again. It's like I almost needed a reason to focus on it again. And it's just, it wasn't by design, but it's just sort of really fortuitously happened that I've been, got this opportunity to focus on racing and do it again. And yeah, I couldn't be happier that I get to do this. <laughs> it's very cool. And then there's all the other benefits alongside it that we can make these cool videos and I can help out these rad riders. So as part of setting up the team, I wrote little bios for each rider when I was submitting them to Pinkbike um, for what I was forecasting that they would do. And for Amy, I wrote that she should show strong, kind of promising her first year. Top 10, I would think, potentially top five. And if she had an exceptional one, potentially a podium, but I was more saying that that would be her second year. Amy's weekend has been one of, I feel like she's operating on a very different frequency from Lord's. Uh, just after the deer gate, I did a really scary overtake on a line I'd never ridden before. <laughs> um, that was interesting. Oh, and then I almost, almost overtook a girl at the bottom. And then we got to Fort William. I was like, well, it's local track. She, you know what, she might sneak into the top five. And she qualified second. <laughs> I don't know, I guess like since I've had kids, I'm feeling more like, uh, I don't know. I don't know, like I've, there's been a switch in my brain that it's, I'm more focused on like developing and helping. I guess I know I'm not gonna get to the point of what my dreams were like when I was younger. I'm not, I don't think I'm gonna get to that point of like podium at a World Cup. So I've almost like just written that off that my racing is fun, I'll do as well as I can but I know Amy could do really well. So, I don't know, I feel more invested in that, if that makes sense. just really good this weekend so if I can keep improving on that and making things a really good environment for everyone to be in yeah like we should have a really good year 
I could always mess it up, <laughs> but I feel like I'm moving in the right direction. The team's moving in the right direction. We're riding bikes well, the equipment's working well. Everyone seems to be having a good time. Yeah, we just need to keep, keep grafting. Let's, let's go. Wait a second, what are we here? It's pink bike racing. We have Thibaut Lally from France motoring around the classic line. And look who it is! It's, it's that guy, Ben Cathro. This is it. Who's going to get booted off the team? Will it be Cathro or will it be Lally? It's... Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> it's Cathro. <laughs> Cathro got booted off his own team. Oh, good guy. Oh, that, was, that was brilliant content. <laughs> That's good.